Go ahead, Ms. Rolson. Thank you, Your Honor. Annalisa, would you state your name and spell it for the record, please? Annalisa, A-N-N-A-L-I-S-A, Clifford Gold, C-L-I-F-F-O-R-D-G-O-L-D. Who are you in relation to this case? I'm the defendant's mother. That's Jaden? Yes. Have you ever testified before? No. Nervous? Yes. A couple rules for testifying. Let the person ask their full question before you answer, okay? Make sense? Yes. And make sure you answer with a yes or a no or a full explanation to answer the question, okay? Okay. Yeah, because this court reporter has taken down everything that everyone says in the courtroom, okay? Thank you. Okay. And if I ask a question or someone else asks a question that you don't understand, you can ask us to restate it, okay? Okay. Annalisa, have you ever interacted with law enforcement? Have you ever been accused of a crime or a traffic ticket or anything like that before? Traffic ticket. No crimes? No crimes. Does this Chayden have any criminal history? No. He, he got in trouble for not wearing a seatbelt in the back seat once. That was it. They didn't take him into a police station and interrogate him for that? No. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes. Annalisa, I just handed you a document that's labeled it's a sealed exhibit. It's triple L for the record. Do you recognize that? I recognize my signature. Is your signature at the bottom? Yes, it is. You signed that document on November 4th of 2021? Yes. Who gave you that document? Richard Vale and Trent Valletta. And do you know who they are in relation to this case? I know that they are DCI. Where were you given that document? Where were you physically? I was at the Jefferson County Law Center in a large office. Okay. Looking at that document, there's four items listed up top. Yes. One of, the, one of them is they're supposed to, uh, law enforcement is supposed to tell you that your child's in custody. Do you see that part of it? I do. All right. And did you know when you were given that document that, that Shaden was in custody? No. Uh, why do you say no? Do you want the long answer? <laughs> um, what I was told is that all of the students and parents of Noemma Graber were being rounded up to try and figure out what had happened, why she had disappeared. I understood that all of the students were together and that the parents were there and that they wanted to be able to talk to the students and they needed my permission to be able to talk to the students. So you didn't understand that Chayden was in custody being held at the point in time when you signed that? No, I thought he was in a room with other students. Let's talk about that second item, the, the delinquent act or, or crime accused. Yes. Did anyone tell you that Nohima Graber had been found dead when you signed that document? No, I knew that she was still missing. Okay. I... <laughs> Did you ask anyone about whether or not she had been found? Yes. Um, in the morning at 5.30 when Trent Folletta was in my home, I asked, he indicated that they were trying to resolve what had happened, and I asked him, had she been found, was she okay? And he said, we will explain everything at the police station. Did they explain anything to you at the police station before you signed that document? Not before I signed it. Okay. And that, that uh, discussion with Agent Valletta, that was in, in your home? 
Correct. And Chayden was still in your home at that time. Correct. There's a part of that document that says that you can confer and speak with your child. Did they tell you that you could go in and talk with Chayden? No. And when I asked, I was told no. Who did you ask? Trent Valletta. And he told you that you couldn't go speak with Chayden? Correct. May also have been Richard Vail. I don't remember exactly. Would you say that again a little clearer, please? It may also have been Richard Vail who told me no. I don't recall which one of the two. I was told no more than once. And at the time you signed that document, did you, is that when they told you no or was it a different time? Uh, it was both before and after. Did they talk to you at all about getting an attorney for yourself or for Chayden or anyone else? No, in fact, I was advised against it. Explain that. Chauncey Molding recommended I not get an attorney because of the expense that I use the state provided attorney. Okay. That was later though, right? Correct. Okay. That wasn't in regards to signing that document? No. Okay. Talk to me, well, explain to the court. You wear corrective lenses? I do. Okay. A document you're looking at, you can read that? I can read it with my glasses on, yes. Okay. Explain to the court eyesight and what you could read and couldn't read on the morning in question, November 4th last year. So in the morning with all the police officers, in my home, I was flustered when we were leaving, could not find my correct glasses, found an old pair that I can drive with but I can't read with. When I was given this document, I couldn't read it. And Richard Vail explained to me it just was to allow them to talk to Chatham and, the, and every parent was being asked to sign it. Um, so that they could talk to all of the students and they needed a parent's permission to be able to talk to the students. And he drew a line on the bottom and made an X, pushed it in front of me and asked me to sign it. And that was Agent Vail who did that? Correct. And I just wanna make sure I understand. He said he just needed you to sign that so he could talk to the students? To Chayden, yes. And he didn't talk to you about any of that information up top? No. Before you signed that form, were you told that Chayden was a suspect in any crime? No. Before you signed that form, were you told that there had even been a homicide? No. Would you have granted permission for law enforcement to speak with Shaden if you knew there had been a homicide? Not without a lawyer present. Would you have granted permission for law enforcement to speak with Chayden if you knew he was a suspect? No, not without a lawyer present. Before you signed that, were you given an opportunity to speak to a lawyer? No. While you were at the Fairfield Police Department, you called for some advice, right? Yes. And that was after you had signed that form? Yes. Can you tell the court if you know or recall what time you spoke with someone for advice? It was at 7.15 a.m. based on my phone log. And is that a phone log for your cell phone? Correct. 
Who did you speak with? My friend who's a former police detective, Amy Jaffe. Does she live in a different state? She lives in Oregon. Okay. So at approximately 7.13 in the morning, is that what you said? Yes. What happened after that conversation with Ms. Jaffe? During the conversation, I had her on speakerphone. She clarified her credentials to Trent Valletta, and the two of them spoke. Trent filled her in, and she said, you need to shut down the interrogation now. And I looked at Trent Valletta, and I said, yes, now. And Trent said, confirmed, you want me to shut down the interrogation? I said, yes. He got up, he left the room, he returned a few minutes later, I was still on the phone with Amy. Amy. He confirmed that he had shut down the interrogation. And that was at 7.13 in the morning? Correct. And did that happen at the beginning of that conversation? Or, or Yes, within the first few minutes. Did you learn anything later on about how long the interview with Jaden went? It went on for hours. Would you say long after you told him to stop it? Yes, long after. Do you know if Chayden had his phone in that interview? Do you know either way? I, he did not. And uh, what I found out later is that it was taken from him while he was still at my home. Okay. So you didn't have any way to communicate with Chayden? No. Other than through law enforcement? Correct. And you were denied access to Chaden by law enforcement? Correct. And you told them to stop the interview, but they didn't? Correct. How old's Chaden? At that time, he was 16. Okay. Just. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Mr. Brown. And this second, Judge, I'm sorry. Do you have a, is it a hyphenated last name, is that right? Technically, no. Okay. So your last name is? Two words. Clifford Gold. So if I call you Miss Clifford Gold, that's accurate? Correct. Miss right. <clears throat> um, Clifford Gold, did you uh, go to the law center with the defendant? I did not. Okay. How was it that you were notified that he was at the law center? When all of the officers and the DCI folks were in my home, I was given the option of riding with Chayden or coming on my own. I requested that they get Chayden's father. My intention was that I would go with Chayden um, and that his father would follow. I asked Trent Valletta specifically, does it make a difference if I go with him or on my own? He said, no, it makes no difference. So I said, all right, since I had yet to see Chayden's father, I traveled separately and followed them to the um, police station. So just to kind of flesh out the circumstances a bit more, um, officers came to your home on what day? Was that November the 4th? Correct. Um, did they knock on the door? Yes. All right, and were you asleep at the time? Yes. It was about 5.30 in the morning, is that right? Yes. Uh, were you and your husband uh, both home? No, I'm divorced. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. So it was you and who else in the home? Only Chayden. Okay. Uh, and you're divorced from Chayden's father? Correct. All right, and where was he living at the time? Around the corner. Okay, so very near where you and Shane lived, correct? Yes. All right, did you notify him when officers um, came to your house at 5.30 in the morning? No, I asked them to go and notify them, him. Okay, did they do that? I believe so. Uh, 
Um, was there any show of force by the officers uh, while they were at your house? No. Were they pleasant with you as far as you can describe? Yes. And, and they did go and get um, the defendant's father? Yes. Did he come to your residence? No. Did he meet you at the police station? Or at the law center, I should say? He went to the law center separately. They never allowed him in to meet with me. Okay. Well, I'm talking about Jay, uh, the defendant's father. I am too. Okay. So he went to the law center or he did not? He went to the law center. I had already been admitted to the office with Trent Valletta and with Richard Vail. And he sat in the waiting room waiting to be admitted to come and be with me. And he was not allowed in. Okay. At the time that officers came to your home, uh, did you have to wake up your son? No, he was getting ready for a driver's ed course at six o'clock in the morning. So he was already up, is that right? Yes. And was this a driver's ed class that he took um, every day? No, it wasn't every day. It was how many days a week would he take the driver's ed class? Uh, it, it was an irregular schedule because it was just based on availability to practice driving. I assume it was not unusual for him to be up as early as 5.30 or 6 a.m. in the morning, is that true? When he had a driver's ed lesson, that's true. Um, you, the form that you've been shown uh, here, the Miranda form uh, that you did sign, correct? Correct. That was signed at your home, is that right? No. Is that signed at the police station? Correct. Okay, sorry. And uh, you had the different glasses on, is that the way I understood? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, that's did, right. Did you tell the officers that you had any difficulty reading the form? I did. Okay, and did they read it to you? No, they just paraphrased that it was to allow them to speak with the students. Okay. That's the only explanation they provided you? Correct. And uh, once you're at the law center, um, you know that uh, the defendant, your son, was charged with the murder of Noam Graber, correct? Uh, at 4.15, I was told that. 4.15 p.m.? P.m. Um, your son, had he, has he attended Fairfield Public Schools his entire uh, school life? Has he always attended the public school? No. Where, where did he go to school prior? He went to the Maharishi School here also in Fairfield prior to attending. And until his freshman year, is that right? Yes. So freshman year would have been his first year at Fairfield Public Schools? Yes. And um, what year was he at in high school whenever um, this, when the Noe McGraver was killed? Tenth grade. And he had Noe McGraver as a teacher, is that correct? Yes. He had her for Spanish? Yes. Was he struggling in that class? You know, our objection, I think that we cross the bounds of relevance to the question of waiver at this point. I think we're getting more into factual allegations and the state's purported motive, and that's outside of what we're uh, talking about here today. We're talking about the intelligence level of the defendant, um, which goes directly to the voluntariness and whether or not he waived. Oh, oh. Did you need Mr. Brown to re-ask the question? Yes, please. Go ahead. Can I come? I kind of written back, please. Just make sure I'm accurate. Uh, question, was he struggling in that class? Yes. And was he otherwise a, a pretty good student? Yes. Okay. Did he have A's or B's in the rest of his classes? Pretty much. Okay, so Spanish was the one he was struggling with, is that right? Yes. And I assume he had plans uh, beyond high school, even though he was a sophomore, was he planning on going to college? 
Yes. And, and do you believe as his parent he would have had sufficient uh, academic background to at least get admitted into college? Sure. Yes. All right. That's all I have. Oh, wait. Hang on a second. Um, you had indicated that uh, the officers had characterized this as uh, an interview with multiple students. Is that right? Yes. And you thought there were other students or parents, or I'm sorry, other students that were being interviewed at the same time? Yes, like in a group. Okay. Did you see other parents at the law center? No, and I wondered about that. Okay. All right. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Olson, just a couple of your honor, thank you. Annalisa, that form we're talking about, was that presented to you right when you got to the law enforcement center? No. Uh, maybe a half an hour or something. I don't quite recall, but it wasn't immediate. but all they told you was so that was so they could talk to him? Correct. Didn't talk at all.